Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 2 o'clock session. Uh, the, today's session is SCADA by the Dashboard Light, and this will be by uh, Glenn. So we'll have questions at the end of the, uh, the, end of the session. All right, thank you. Now, that's not my title. My title is much simpler, like dashboards, something you might be interested in. Uh, Chris here decided that it'd be much more colorful if we called it skated by the dashboard light, and I think probably most of you know what the illusion is too, but um, I'll not take any credit for any of the creativity on that. <laughs> so, what I'm talking about when we say dashboards is something that you look at that doesn't consider, or it wouldn't be called a mimic or a schematic of what you're looking at in the plant. So you have these typical kind of dashboard kind of things. When I talk about a mimic or a different type of uh, system, I'm looking at something that might look, might look more like that. That what I would call a schematic. So schematics everybody understands, even dashboards uh, people understand, but the point I wanted to get at for the dashboards is where they fight in in the overall system. When you talk or look at on the internet, what people are talking about when they're talking about dashboards, they're talking about KPIs or key performance indicators for business applications. And there's a lot of opportunity in uh, the SCADA world for bringing that kind of information into the manager or engineer's office rather than just into the control room. Control room is still vitally important, but there's this gap in there I think that's uh, not fully recognized or fully utilized. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of the first systems that VT SCADA, or Web at the time it was called, was used was for the Scott Paper Company. They had this Honeywell TDC 3000 DCS system. And the goal of their project was to get data from that TDC 3000 system onto engineers and managers' desktops. Now the pulp and paper plants that they were putting this in uh, they had control rooms. And I don't remember back in the 80s, but these Honeywell TDC 3000 workstations were, you know, big consoles. And the problem that uh, they had was they could just throw money at it, but these big consoles don't fit well in the engineer's office. And they cost $60,000 each, which was kind of a showstopper for on two counter for us to say, and they got to run the Honeywell network into their offices and say, this is not what we want. We still need process information on my desktop. I don't need to see exactly how the plant's running exactly. I need the, the big picture. Is it up? What's my inventory? Are there any quality problems in the plant? I want to see that big picture stuff on the desktop. And then I want to do some you know, short-term kind of analysis. And the uh, idea grew from there. So out of that, we created a product for Scott, which ultimately came in to be called Honeywell's PCNM, PC Network Manager, that sold for many years under the Honeywell name. But that is uh, kind of old stuff, but that's kind of where the genesis of VT SCADA web came from, that kind of view of the world. Now, operational uh, pages are really just focused on running the plant day to day. It's the pilot in the cockpit. We're talking about systems that are putting information uh, for managers to make a, a more high-level decision. So we're not talking about uh, you know, whether the pump is running specifically right now. We want to know how much money is it burning off right now. So dollar signs on the screen. I, at one of the uh, ACE shows, I think it was, or WebTech shows, I was talking to... Uh, and I've forgotten who it was now, one of the managers, and he said, one of the things that I'm really surprised we don't see more of on SCADA screens is dollar signs. The, oper the operators aren't really interested in dollar signs, but everybody involved with the management of the plant is really interested in dollar signs. So why don't we see dollar signs on these screens? And you know, th uh, when, you, uh, when you're in water plants, not so much. You can think of chemicals, you can think of energy, things that consume money. When you're into production like Toyota, or you're into oil production, dollars is really important. Uh, when you're into perhaps utilities, 
being online is really important, making sure the water quality is important. Uh, but there are things that are kind of above just the day-to-day -day piloting of the system. I did have a uh, opportunity to go to a presentation for the Con Control Systems Integrator Association. I don't know if you're familiar with it. It's a group of uh, system integrators that get together and provide some sort of standardization for for uh, the industry. Uh, they had a conference a couple of years ago in Puerto Rico, as it turned out. Uh, there was a speaker on there. It's kind of a conference like this. And uh, he was on stage, and this is kind of an interesting guy. I uh, was talking about um, return on investment, and there's not enough people put money or thought into when they're putting a control system together into putting some information on the screen which helps justify the productivity of the return on investment. This guy was kind of an interesting guy because he not only had an engineering degree, he had a, an engineering degree, a PhD in engineering, a PhD in accounting, if you can imagine, and a PhD in biblical studies. Now, <laughs> now this you might call be a well-rounded guy, but anyway, his, uh, he's got the same sort of philosophy. This just from the business perspective, you said the argument being that everybody says, I can't justify a project unless it has a one-year payback. I, I'm sure you've all heard that kind of uh, thing. So what does everybody do? They put in a proposal that says, what's the, re what's the return on investment on this? this? Everybody says it's one year. What do the managers do? They never check. <laughs> what they should be doing is putting the information in the PLC and on the screen, what is the actual return on that investment. And it's not just what happens in the first year that it's paid back, it's what it makes after that that really counts. So there's my, my uh, basic points. Now, reports kind of get you partway there. You've got the real-time control system. You've got reports that people get kicked out once a week, once a month, or once a year on demand kind of reports. They come out generally in a spreadsheet or a printed format, an email. But they're only... Uh, sort of, I would consider, imagine driving down the road, you close your eyes for 10 seconds, you open them for one, you close your eyes for 10 seconds, you open them for one, pretty soon you're going to end up in the ditch. Uh, so if you don't have a view on what's going on on a constant basis, you can go off the rails much faster. If I, if I only knew at the first of the month what I know now, I wouldn't have gone so far off the rails. So that kind of information is great to have. So. It comes to mind one of my key truisms that I have to go back to people and say, even in the business world, you can't control what you don't measure. So if you, you know, imagine trying to control the temperature in the room and you never measure it. You just put heat in or cooling in and then suddenly you hope it's right. <coughs> so unless you're watching what happens, you can't control it, it's not going to go where you want it to. So I want to take a look at a few pages here that are considered sort of dashboardy kind of things. This one we might consider our kind of demo dashboard similar to this one. These are what I would call more operational kind of dashboards. They're great. Operators can use them. Similar kind of things like the car dashboard. This is what the poor crew in the in configuration challenge is working on right now, creating that in two hours using standard BT SCADA tools. They're very intent in that room right now. Just to give you a little hint, the uh, developer who created that took five hours to create it. Uh, he also had to create the spec for it, so it was it's not totally how to create the artwork, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go in there, talk to Lori, she'll, she'll tell you. It's probably already done for her. Uh, but this is more the kind of thing when I'm talking about dashboards for the higher level things. It's, it's the more the metadata. If you think about the control systems, there's the operation of the pumps, keeping the chemistry right, keeping the flows up, all that kind of stuff. And then there's all the ancillary stuff around the plant that's really important. It's the energy consumed by the pumps, the state of the equipment, how many times it starts and stops, is it wearing out? The computer systems that you have to run your SCADA on, your telemetry, your data communications, all that's metadata. That's not really directly provo you know, producing oil trucks or 
water. But it's really important to keep this stuff running well. And if you keep your eye off the bowl, you can lose it. So this is one of the pieces that I'll come back to and say, how do you get to this kind of information? We find a lot of customer calling in that the systems work well for years, and now it's suddenly not working so well. Well, suddenly is not quite the way it happened. It very gradually over time, some poorer choices led to the performance degrading, degrading, degrading until they hit the 100% uh, mark. We've got the CPU level right there on the screen. That's what VT Skate is using right now, 0.2% of the CPU. It works great up to 99.9%. <laughs> you don't notice it. Once it goes to 100, it can look really bad. And if you don't keep your eye on that, you got a problem. So uh, similarly with memory, you start running out of memory, things go bad. This is one that bites people occasionally. You run out of disk space, you, you have a really bad day because now you've got to you know, basically rebuild your system. So these things are too bad. I click on one, give me the trend of how it's been going. But I want to dig behind the scenes and say, how do I get this kind of information into my SCADA system? Now, if you don't already know, uh, I'm going to right click on this and look at the properties. We have a tag name. But the magic here is it connects us to a driver. So we've got an analog status, regular tag. But the piece of the driver that's important is that it's connected to this uh, tag type that we call a uh, workstation status tag. This workstation status or workstation driver basically uses the system the computer as your I.O. So you may not have encountered this, you may have. But the workstation status driver is saying, for this particular workstation, which is called Glenn Wadden, I want to be able to use the PC itself as my I.O. Now within VT SCADA, or within the Windows operating system, there are a whole series of addresses that you can get at and look if you were in Andrew's last one, there's this uh, F1 help that always gives you information. Going back to the workstation status tag again, I think I should be able to get some information on... I didn't want to do that. I want to hit properties. I always have trouble talking and typing at the same time. So there are, I can't pull up, I'm sorry, I didn't rehearse that part. There are a whole series of named fields within the PC that you can get at, like disk space, network bandwidth, how much uh, load is on various aspects of the system. Very key piece of information. The one that's actually shown by this particular tool was called VTS CPU. There's overall computer CPU, there's memory, there's various kinds of memory you can get at. Uh, so all really useful information that if you just monitor it, you can even start putting alarms on these things. You say, when my disk space starts to get low, notify me. It's not going to affect operations until it does. Uh, but it's not going to be something that the operators have to de generally deal with. But it'd be really important to know these kinds of things. So this is one aspect of dashboards that are not directly related to operations. I've got this other kind of view in here, which I think is a, a different kind of uh, operator dashboard. This is something that's uh, uh, reminiscent of a system that was put into CNRL, Canadian Natural Resources, where they have a line for every well, oil well, that's remote. And I can look at all the statistics of those and have them all sorted on the screen. This is a, uh, what we call, just a status of all of the different information for one summary table. So if you can think about this as being kind of like a real-time report page where I can look at what's happening now 
for a lot of different pieces of data in a tabular form. And this looks kind of like tedious to build, but if I'll show you how it's built, it's really quite easy. So this entire table is one widget. It's called a tag list widget. And all this tag list widget is saying, I want to draw car stats. This is the, the name of the line. Each line is a separate widget that gets repeated. I can filter it by what kind of tags in that list. And then I format my table to saying column width, height of the rows, and how I want these things scaled. So if you can imagine, I'll just take the, uh, I'll drop that list down a little bit. I can narrow the row height a little bit and make it a little tighter. But this is just entirely configuring the table as a whole. Each line then is just one thing called a car stats. Now we have them rows and columns. You can actually go uh, draw them in two-dimensional grids. So they don't have to be lines. They can be tiles of things that resize to fill your page as your page grows or shrinks. But the, the key aspect is that each line or tile on the page is just a drawing method here called car stats. Well, I'm going to go back and look at uh, this widget called car stats. What is this magic widget? Well, here it is. It's just a set of widgets, each of which are this numeric drawing method with an indentation. So I'm saying, I'm drawing the speed for the tag. I'm drawing the RPM for the tag. Very tedious, but I'm building a single line by using my widget tools. And then use the tag list thing to draw it. And if new cars are added to my system, this is stolen from the configuration challenge. If I have a, you see I've got down to Victor's car. Let's say I wanted to put in a, uh, I'll put another car in. So I created a new tag type called Walter, but his label is called Victor, which I'll just quickly change. You can see down the bottom of my tag list drawing method there, Victor has shown up. I hope you can see it all. Change that from Victor. So this is a way that as your system grows, you can still have a page that captures all of the current information without having to add new pieces to it every time something changes. And as it grows longer than the page, scroll lists can come up. So this is, you can imagine this as being you know, a, a real-time report that once you know how to build them, they can be put together in you know, less than an hour kind of scenario. That's all great because this is all showing just the current information on there. This is the kind of thing you might see in a uh, web browser for business API kind of things. But all this kind of stuff is, you know, accessible to your SCADA system in general and say, what's my revenue? What's my expenses? I know based on energy monitoring, consumption of chemicals, uh, whatever parameters that I have, I can calculate my expenses plus some known overheads, and then I can add my revenue based on my productivity. I can take the difference, look at the gain and loss, compare that to yesterday, and I can say how much uptime I had, my peak operating capacity, or whatever parameters you choose as being your key performance indicators. Operators aren't too focused on these kind of things. Managers are. And those are the people that are actually signing checks. So and if they can make better decisions, all the better. So I'm looking at this one. This is, you know, 
pretty pretty basic thing to build. This was just a, a whole set of little widgets that I dragged and dropped on the screen. Nothing really exotic about it. I have these KPI widgets that I built. It's just a little being with a box title, uh, a value in the middle, and a change of value, whether it's red or green, whether it's going up or down. You pass it in some parameters and you drop it on the page. Um, so the drawing part's really easy. The challenging part is getting the data sometimes. The systems generally aren't set up to get that kind of information. You don't usually find out what your energy bill is until you get it in the mail. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't know. If you measure that kind of stuff, you can know. What are your key drivers for getting this system running? Uh, maybe it's not money. Maybe it's uh, residual chlorine or something else that's you know, the driving factor for keeping the system online or within regulatory compliance. Knowing at the end of the month that you're out of compliance is not nearly so good as saying that I'm going to be out of compliance if I don't do better than average for the rest of the month. Uh, I've got, there's a few other little tag types aside from this tag list widget that are really useful for getting uh, data together. Uh, certainly one of them you've, you're no doubt familiar with. I'll throw it up just for uh, completeness. We have the calculation tag. I'm going to call this thing total because I have lack of imagination. But you can put in any calculation you want in here. So an expression that contains, uh, I need the average across all three flows. I want the total flow out of three different uh, pipes or flow meters. I can put that in, display it in a continuous basis. Maybe that's a nice key performance indicator of what the system is doing. Uh, perhaps a more heavy hitting or, or more powerful type that's often overlooked and then when it's not overlooked it's often abused <laughs> uh, the historian statistics tag this one is actually a, a really cool piece of uh, information that's in there primarily for keeping um, report like information on a real-time basis so if I look at uh, create a, a fictitious tag, yesterday's peak power, I'll say I need to pick a tag that I'm referencing. I say, well, really what I want to look at is uh, this analog status, whatever odd name that one is. Let's go something. Um, I don't see anything really useful here. That's okay. I'm going to pick that one anyway. So I can choose which statistics to run on that tag. So I want to look at the average or the minimum, the maximum, the value at the beginning of the time or whatever it will be. So I want to look at the maximum for a period of time. I'll put the units in. And this is the important part where this is where you start to abuse it if you don't get it right. I want to look at the last 24 hours, and I want to put the update rate in. Don't do seconds. <laughs> People can run hundreds of these things on their system because they're great. It gets you lots of information. You can put it on the page. But what happens every time that period elapses, it goes to the historian and grabs all that data. So I, if I'm running... I may be running 10,000 records a day on the system. I say I want to run, you know, I want to look at the average for the last day and I want to update it every second. That's pulling 10,000 records every second and taking the average of them. And then you multiply that by 1,000 tags doing that. You'll bring the system to your knees. Do you really need it every second? No. You really need it at a reasonable interval probably. So this is like any, um, any uh, parameter. You keep your time period to something that makes sense to you. So I'll say if it's a 10-minute interval, I want to keep it up to date. But that's pretty much real time from a, a reporting kind of tool. And now I've got a tool that I can actually display on the page. Um, one of these tiles or whatever is I can get all this information say, what's my up-to-the-minute almost time for 
energy consumption, flow, dollars, whatever it is that I'm really after. So I know we've got uh, uh, a few things that are in here. This is a fairly light presentation, but uh, I'll just ca scan my notes here for a second to make sure that I got everything that I was intending to talk about. Um, yeah, there's one other kind of odd thing that I, uh, I've seen at uh, facilities. I don't know if it's odd, but it's a unique idea that there is a, I've seen this in a power plant in Brazil and there's a water plant in California. They have a large monitor in the lobby that shows you what's going on in the plant. Uh, that's kind of a big summary of what's happening. Production right now, you know, how many kilowatts, what's happening for the overall health of the plant. But it's basically a dashboard, mostly for public kind of consumption. Really useful kind of thing. As a matter of fact, in our office, we have uh, little TVs, large, 55-inch TVs on the wall that show our current status, and it's not showing anything sort of uh, real-time production. It shows you things like VT SCADA attendance, <laughs> what the numbers are on that. It shows the uh, map of the world with all the pins that have uh, installed VT SCADA this week. Uh, so there are things that you can do that are not just real-time control, but take into more businessy kind of uh, information, but it's all on a more real-time basis. Um, so going beyond that, I mean, you can certainly look at some of the alarm system. I don't want to steal Alan Hudson's kind of, I got his, he woke up when I said his name. <laughs> so thunder on alarm stuff, but there's a lot of metadata and alarms themselves. The fact that you know, an alarm occurs too many times, that's not exactly production information. That's more of a configuration information for those involved with managing or configuring the system. If I've got an alarm like I saw at Sacramento a year ago, uh, this alarm on average is going off every five minutes. And, uh, you kind of ask, doesn't somebody get annoyed by that? It just ignore it. It's noise. Well, it's sh you really should be doing something about that, but just getting your alarm systems kind of more meaningful so that people don't get numb to hearing about uh, things that are irrelevant. Uh, anyway, that's mostly what I have to say. Happy to entertain any questions. Uh, fairly dry subject, but I'm thankful that you came in and uh, uh, gave me the time. I know it, uh, you could have gone to the other session. Maybe you should have. <laughs> If there are no questions, I thank you for your attendance. Enjoy your time here. Grab a snack outside. And uh, thank you. <laughs>